for watching The Right Stuff. Thank you for that. Live on Five with Ed, Gail and Craig. Uh, and, oh, well, it's a slightly unusual way of wrapping up today's talk fest uh, because this year thalidomide reaches its half century. And a few months ago, I got to meet a few thalidomiders and, if I'm absolutely honest, bowled over by uh, their remarkable stories, remarkable achievements. And so we've invited three to come along and join us this morning to tell their tales, answer any questions you may have. So meet Jeff, Sukeshi and Fred. Morning, ladies and gents. Nice to see you. Uh, and, uh, of course, the number 07 173 555. Why today? Well, last night there was a wonderful exhibition of paintings by an artist called Catherine Rennie, who was commissioned to paint some of these guys to mark the 50th anniversary of thalidomide coming on the market. The drug, in, in case you didn't know, was marketed by makers Grunenthal uh, as a cure for morning sickness, but the side effects on the unborn babies was, well, catastrophic. About 3,500 thalidomiders survive around the world, 457 in the UK. And Grunenthal is a, a thriving company, uh, although morally they admit they do feel guilty about what happened, legally they did nothing wrong. Most of the testing procedures for modern medicines came about because of the thalidomide tragedy. Most surprising of all, though, to me, I don't know about them, we'll find out in a moment, is the drug is still in use today. And not uh, to help people with morning sickness, but as a treatment for cancer, and for leprosy. And one of the men behind the exhibition is Jeff Adam Spink. You probably recognise him from telly. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Hi. So, uh, let's talk about the exhibition first of all. Um, what, what started it? Why now? I think because um, a couple of friends and I decided that, um, you know, we're a very finite group of people. people. People like us won't exist in 50 or 100 years' time. Mm. So, you know, rather than just being remembered as some terrible pharmaceutical catastrophe that you've just alluded to, we thought we wanted to sort of celebrate who we are and what we are. And what better way to do that than to commission a brilliant artist like Catherine to, to do these wonderful, almost pre-Raphaelite portraits that uh, I think will hopefully stick in people's memories. And I, I think they're a thing of, of great beauty, and that's what we wanted to record, really. Immortality, yeah. And good for you, good for you. Tell me something about how... Well, how you came to be thalidomide. Uh, we said it was your mother and one tablet, is that right? That's right. My mother took one tablet. She didn't even realise she was pregnant at the time. Mm. Um, you know, and this, it depends on which day of your pregnancy you take the tablet as to what kind of damage, uh, you know, occurs. Because on, on different days, the fetus develops different bits, the arms, the legs, whatever. In my case, you can see my, 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 my arms are affected and also my eyesight. I'm registered blind. So that must have been, you know, I, 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 I copped it on the day when it was the arms and the eyes. <laughs> if, if it's like for a morning sickness, why, why was your mother taking it if she didn't realise she was pregnant? What was she prescribed it for? It wasn't um, just prescribed for morning sickness. It was also prescribed as a sedative. And she was mourning the loss of her father who had died, I think, five weeks previously. Okay. OK, I'd like to bring in Sukeshi now, if I may. Good morning. Good morning. Now, one of the things I know from, from talking to you uh, before is about sort of compensation, how you guys have been looked after, and about the fact, the headline fact, really, which is that nobody expected you guys to still be here today, 50 mm. years on. Can you tell us a bit more about, about how you've been looked after and, and what the future holds? Well, I'm much younger than 50, let me yeah, add first. Yeah. You're one of the youngest. <laughs> I'm the youngest, yes. Um, well, looking after, uh, in a sense, we, we live day to day. Um, we have our own trust, but obviously it's not enough. We, we're um, coming across other problems because we weren't um, expected to survive beyond 25 years. Uh, most of us have uh, back problems, um, shoulder problems. Um, because you, know, you have to work that your limbs extra hard. Yes, yeah. yes correct. Um, you know, we have to bend down much more than you do. And we do things in our childhood. We did things that um, we weren't aware would cause problems later on. Um, so, yes, uh, we, we're going to need a lot more help in the future. And uh, as you say, we're all, most of us are already in our early 40s, late 40s. Um, so it, it's just going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. And, I, and I'm, I'm right in thinking that, that your condition came out, your father was a doctor. Yes. And he actually prescribed the drug to your mother. Yes. I was born in East Africa, in Uganda. And um, the drug, uh, it was British um, run country at that time. And the yeah. drug came to Uganda. And unfortunately, it was um, known as the miracle drug. And it helped cure insomnia and, you know, depression, lots of things. And um, because it was in the house, 
my father said to my mother that it's a very good drug and it'll help you sleep, etc. And she only took a couple of tablets as well. And that, and that was that. And I have to say, what did you think of your painting? Because I, it was, oh, I actually bowled over by it. It's was amazing. It? It's, uh, I, I didn't know a human being could create such a thing. And that's you with your mother, Rama, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. That's uh, a remarkable, remarkable picture. Good for you. And uh, finally, uh, let's meet Fred. And Fred was born in Germany. And this is where the story gets quite interesting because Grun and Tal's responsibilities and the compensation <coughs> structure is different across Europe. And in many ways, British thalidomiders have done better than everyone else. Would that be a fair comment? Totally, totally. Because I was born in Germany, I get the German compensation, which until recently was one-sixth on average of what people here in Britain get. Uh, it's just been doubled in Germany, but we're still only getting effectively on average a third of what, what people like Jeff and Sukeshi get in Germany. And you have to also remember in Germany where the drug was developed, there are nearly 3,000 of us survivors. Um, so 85% of survivors are in Germany because that's where the company was, is, that developed the drug. So what stage, because I know there are ongoing campaigns to, to get compensation, proper compensation of victims, where's that now? The company, because of the deal they struck in the early 70s, is legally ring-fenced. You can't, in Germany, make a legal claim against Grunenthal anymore. They are just totally protected. Um, so really, the, the prong of the attack now is on the German government and Grunenthal still on a on the moral basis, to come up with more money in the first line for us Germans, if I may put it that way, uh, in, because there's 3,000 of us, but also to kind of try and get a bigger European deal, which includes the Brits, the Swedes, the Spaniards, the Italians, the Austrians, you know, and the Germans, um, to try and get a lump sum for all of us. Because, I mean, our life expectancy is about another 30, 35 years. And as Sukeshi said, you know, the physical damage that we've got has worn us out early, and it ain't going to get better from no. here on in. And um, uh, last, last question for me that I, I, I just find extraordinary is, uh, and I'd like to hear from all three of you, how do you feel about the fact that thalidomide is still available? Fine. <laughs> really? It is very, very effective in certain cases. Some people have had their, their life saved by thalidomide. Um, I very recently read a book by a guy called Rock Brinner, who is the son of Yule Brinner, the actor. Rock Brinner's life, he had this mysterious illness, ulcers on his legs, nothing cured it, it was going to kill him, Thalidomide saved his life. There are other people in that situation. I can't possibly say don't use it again. Where it's effectively used and where it's the, the best available treatment, I have no issue with it as long as people know what they're taking and they are practicing. I think the, 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 the regime that is recommended is that people have to be practicing two forms of birth control and submit to pregnancy tests. Right. I have mixed feelings because um, it's okay, we can, pra we can practice that, we can put a stop to it here. But in third world countries where there's still a generation of thalidomiders coming up, what about them? There's a whole new generation of thalidomiders, much younger than us in Brazil, where the drug was used for leprosy treatment. Still is. Yes, still and is. it's still being used. And, you know, there are safeguards in place, they're not always effective. So there are young thalidomiders, not our generation, coming through still. So it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged yes. sword. mixed okay. feelings. Okay, Craig, do you have it? Yeah, I was just wondering about your parents and whether or not uh, they felt any form of guilt or how, how they coped with Good it. Question. Because I think that must be just awful. I mean, do you blame yourself for taking that one tablet? or I mean, I know you can't because you don't know at the time, but I just wondered how they felt. I think my mother um, has always and will always uh, feel a certain level of guilt, although every time I raise the subject and we talk about it, I say, what could you have done? You followed medical advice, you were just doing what the doctor said, there is no issue. Um, and, you know, f for all the guilt you feel, it's not going to change anything. So no. let's, let, let's move on, let's, let, let's forget about it. I think it's probably more difficult if you were that woman that took that tablet. I think it's, I think it's something that most of the women that took it will always live with. It might be worth pointing out that we get compensation, but Thank thalidomide you. and the effects it had on, on us, mm ruined many, many marriages. Mm. It sent people into depression, mm. you know, and there's never been compensation for the, you know, the psychological damage that was done to our parents. Yeah. Do you think they, I mean, uh, uh, last question, do you think they will ever, can you ever properly compensate for, for something like this? You can at least make sure that, um, you know, we, we, we have the funds that as we progressively deteriorate physically, we can live a, a kind of a dignified life. Because life. you know what caused it. It's not a kind of an act of God. It, it, it was a drug. Okay. And by the way, can I just point out, there's going to be a big demo outside the German embassy this Friday <laughs> at 12 o'clock. 
to round the point home again to the German <laughs> can government. Indeed, <laughs> so can indeed, sir. can indeed. Fred Jeff Sukeshi, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming in. Remarkable stories, remarkable people. The exhibition is on at New City Hall in London until the 20th of October. Can't recommend it enough. The paintings are quite stunning. And also a round of applause for Ed Gale and a wonderful Craig. <laughs> See you tomorrow at 9. Bye for now.